Hello again and welcome to Bench Talk. I'm Tammy Garthway. Hi guys, I'm Carla Garrett. That was an abrupt like music stop. <laughs> Hard stop. I um, know. <laughs> so here we are again, another week closer. I think it's like 50 days now, something oh. like that. I think I saw that. That was in the last couple of days. So we're down to what, seven weeks? Is that right? Seven, seven, yeah. Seven weeks um, from yesterday. Yes. So 5th of November is what Tammy is talking about. Yeah. Remember, mm -hmm. remember the 5th of November. I, I can't imagine that anybody's <laughs> going to forget which day election day is. Somebody so why are people so crazy? I don't know. So, I mean, there's a lot in this world that I'm I, it, I, like I, politically crazy, just crazy, crazy, driving crazy. You go in the store, everybody's so, frustrated. So everyone seems like dialed up, right? My theory is that... Uh, Everyone has an autoimmune response when they get vaccinated and then you become inflamed. And I actually think on a cellular level, people are dialed like up, really. I mean, I saw in today's paper the road rage incident that ended the in The one a in Littleton. I didn't read the whole story. Deaths, you know? And I was like, Jesus. Where? And, and you're like, guys, I see on. this all the time. I drive down the road, you know, because I drive back and forth. I drive a lot these days. And, um... I just always, I'm like, oh, here comes another one. This one's in a big air, big hurry. I got my own colorful words for it. but And then I wonder, like, where are you going? You're now one car ahead, and you, like, drive like an idiot to do that. And you see people, and I think, yeah. You know, I will say 20 years ago, I was kind of that kind of driver. Like, it was just go, I mean, go, I've go. I've always been an aggressive, I should say, I, I, I I think I'm a fairly aggressive driver. You Maybe know. we're becoming old biddies, no, Tammy. No, <laughs> because it's not just, no, because like Dan, even Dan, and Dan's hardly like crazy reckless driver. You know, he'll be driving down the road and he'll be like, well, I'm sorry if 10 miles over the speed limit's not fast, fast enough, enough for right. you. You know, like, it's not like you're going, you're like putting along. <laughs> Excuse me. I just want people to like not pass me in the in the breakdown lane. I think that's reasonable. So uh, I was out in Goffstown this morning. Mm. Beautiful walk out there at the. Um, I don't know if it has an official name, but Where? it's there. There are several trails that are behind the ladies' prison in Goffstown. Yeah, I think it's that go down to the river. Yeah, when yep, you and I went kayaking yep. there once. Yep. So I I drop in from from a different entrance yep. than from from there. But oh, it's just it is. It's always such a great and it's time always nice there. and cool up there. Yeah. Like temperature cool. Like yeah. even if it's warm out, that trip through there is always seems to be. Um, and cooler. so I've been doing a lot of driving too, right, for work. And uh, it occurred to me, we are so lucky to live here in New yep. Hampshire. Like, like you know, guys, like I know everyone has their political differences and, you know, the frequency is like up here, you know, but in the end, it's like we most do live people in a who are running for office yep. genuinely have like their hearts in a good place. They're not monsters. Right. They're not, you know, like this I mean, rhetoric I have, wait, just they, needs right. to stop. And you get out into the real world and you interact with real people and you're like, okay, can we just stop with this, this, this level of hate? It's like hateful and it's just not serving us as a society. So I'm here to tell everyone, let's put a little more love in the well, world. Well, I do agree. I that? think that, um, I think you get further. I mean, you see it in, um, you see it in a lot of different ways. You can measure it. I can, we can talk about uh, some information about uh, St. A's poll that came out this morning, but you know, there's always a favorability and a likability. And when I served in the state house, I did, you know, and you talk to people who can be rational and they, they will tell you, you know, you do have a better chance of working with somebody who you don't agree with if you're not friendly to them, if you're nice to them, if you treat them as a colleague as opposed to an enemy. Um, and there's a lot. There are a lot of elected officials who can't. That's so, just not in their personalities. So I, I mean, I don't know if if maybe it is a personality thing. I mean, I think for me, I, you know, I grew up in a diplomatic household, so mm -hmm. we were, you know, sort of taught from a young age that you have to. Be polite yeah. to, 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 to the point of possible pathology. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I have some people-pleasing things that I had to learn to dial back over the years. Um, but, you know, we have these sort of social systems for a reason, right? right. Like there's decorum at the state Please house. And thank because, you. Right. Because, because you're making laws that impact the entire state. In the, well, you know. that, but also as a sort of... Um, roadmap to behavior so that yeah. people don't end up, you know, fighting. They tell you that. They, they don't, you know. I don't know if they still tell you. They used to tell us that in orientation that the reason that 
the suit, you know, the suit coat, which too many people just refuse to do anymore. But, you know, the, the attire is for partially because you are far less likely to punch <laughs> A person that is... It's when, harder to punch someone no, in a when suit. you're standing, you're dressed in a professional way, right. you are more likely to act a little bit more professional. And it literally is to avoid fisticuffs. Like, right, but, uh, you know, I'm also like, so something like... And you take in, this in, position a little, maybe a little more seriously. So in diplomacy, right, so it could literally be, like, let's use a really extreme Ukraine and Russia or, you know, Israel and Hamas, right? And you're like, well, at some stage, you guys are either just going to murder each other forever, mm -hmm. or someone's going to have to get in a room and try to and have right. a conversation and hash it out. So if you are like like functioning at the highest levels as you can as a human, you should be able to shake the hand of your enemy, right? Because you should be able to be well, like, I transcend my basest <laughs> right. beings, right? Like, we're all trying to be better humans, right? You would hope. Um, and so this, this, I just think we are so off the deep end in terms of, and, and I think it's social media mixed well, it's together not, it's with not the, helping the, because people can get a, a dopamine hit from, I mean, you, we all do it. I mean, we all spend way too much time on our phones or on, you know, whatever. But um, there are a lot of people who can't, they just can't disconnect from it. That constant stream of emotional well, input. But, and, and dopamine addiction is exactly. actually a real yeah. thing. Like, there's science That's there. That's what I mean. So. And so people will say things like, oh, I'm addicted to my social media. And I'm like... So if I casually just came into Manch Talk today and I'm like, hey, I'm addicted to fentanyl, right. you know? And it's like, oh, Carla, that That's sounds okay. cute. Never mind, That's Never nice. mind right? Just, yeah. and, and so I feel like we're so casually, you know, looking at this issue and I'm like, but it's having almost more stringent real world uh, issues than say someone who is randomly well, yeah, addicted it, to fentanyl, well, right? Because, because can, it's if, like- If you need that, constant feed and that constant um impulse you know you you need that your re your reaction it off technology is equally fast and sharp yeah in the grocery store you have no patience in the grocery line you know what i mean sometimes it's legitimate that you don't have any patience <laughs> in the grocery line i felt terrible for the woman behind me i went into the walmart in manchester i came home i said yeah I'll, i could take that store off the list i don't ever need to go back there again um <laughs> i went in to get my paper towels or something right and I'm in, the lines were just insanely long. And I just thought, I just, I just want to check out. Which is funny because to me, the, the speedy line is 20 items or less. And I'm like, shouldn't the speedy line be like 10 mm. items or less? Because 20 items is a lot of stuff. So there's, you know, somebody I'm behind this, you know, mother and grandmother and kid and the cart full. And I'm like, oh, good Lord. And I felt so bad for the older woman behind me who was like, I just come here to get like, she's got two things of oatmeal and a banana. You know, she's just picking up her stuff. And she goes, it's always so bad. They it take, it's so, the lines are just ridiculous. And I thought, yeah, I mean, I. And the cashier had an attitude. The cashier was like, well, everybody can take their time because they got to wait on me. And I'm thinking, yeah, but sweetheart, here's the thing. I didn't anticipate buying paper towels being a something I have to schedule an hour of my... I just ran in to get a couple things and it's taking me forever to get so, out of this store. So do you think that's also because, you know, it seems like we do have a worker shortage. Like well, everywhere I go, yeah, like we still service do. and restaurants is kind of That's what people say, and... you're lucky, you know, like there was a, what was I reading, something today and somebody was talking, oh, that Amazon is um, sending their employees back to the office. Yeah, I They have to that. go back into work. Five and days a week. Five days a week, which, you know, those people have an option. You can do that job that requires you to be in the office five days a week, or you can find a job that allows you to work from home. I mean, Dan and I are consciously, you know, Dan's never going back into an office. He doesn't have, he, we just wouldn't. Um, but, you know, that's the reality of working for that company. Nobody's forcing you. And somebody said, well, just be glad you still have a job. And I thought, who doesn't still have a job? If you don't have a job, you're not doing something. Well, I know that it's I mean, hard I to actually, get a good job sometimes. Yeah, I but think, I mean, I think there is a, a, I think the job market is, is weird is weird right now. I think there's a lot of displacement that's happening with AI that isn't really being discussed. Well, and I also think that we've l complicated employment over the, say, oh. last 10 or 20 years where 
You used to just go and apply, you know, you have a job, you post the jobs, people apply from the job, you look at 10 different pieces of paper, you go, let's talk to these three. Now the H, I'm not sure if like the majority of HR personnel have any idea. A friend of mine has got a job and she sent me a thing and said, what is the second injury fund? She goes, and I was like, well, it's something to do with workers comp. And if you have a second, you know, I don't really remember, but, and she said, because I'm being asked to fill out a form that says second injury and it asks her and it, and it wanted her to give them all her medical history, all procedures, all Ill, these things. And I was like, send me that form. So I looked at the form and I said, well, personally, and maybe I'm just obstinate, I would have just put in my name, you know, that stuff and put N slash A on everything and signed it. I said, because I don't believe New Hampshire has a law that requires you to tell your employer all of your medical history. I just, I just don't think, now, if they want to say, do, have you ever had a worker's comp claim? And you say yes, and then they want you to give more specifics. That's completely legitimate. But if you answer no, the form should stop. So I, all I kept thinking was, and, and this person's been employed by this employer for months, so they're like, why now? And I said, if I had to guess, that person didn't know what the heck they were doing, and now they're looking through the list of forms they were supposed to collect. And I said, because I don't think most this, not to be disparaging to HR people, but I think the people well, working in HR don't have a, they don't have an actual but, skill but, set. But, but let's not actually insult the HR people or, you know, in my case, I'm now seeing this is the same <laughs> problem in real estate. Here's the reality. When we say government is too big, mm -hmm. what we are actually talking about is exactly this, is when we have created so many forms, so many requirements policies, and layers, so many regulations, mm -hmm. requirements, and frigging check boxes yep. that it becomes impossible to actually function, right? So we are spending probably billions, if not trillions of dollars at this stage, um, like filling in boxes. Yeah, no, I agree. We get on the internet to tell the internet we're not a robot. Right. I'm human. And I'm like, what are we doing? We're just putting information in boxes to that nobody's reading. That, well, I think some people are munging this data and they use it in order to get like economies of scale that are so small. So if you're in an insurance company, maybe you want to buy this workman comp data that's now being collected because it's on the open market and they've just made it metadata so it's not your name, but suddenly we know 10,000 people with multiple sclerosis also know, had work, <laughs> workman comps claims yeah. or whatever, right? So there are these people who are working incorporate things to find those maybe 2%, 0.2% savings, right? Because they got some data that someone else didn't have. But that 0.2% saving, you can only get through corporatism yeah. because they're the big people who can pay all the lawyers to buy the data, to fill in the boxes, to do all of it. Whereas if you're a small business owner you or just want to hire somebody just to do the job, to, right? you know, you you can't it is, do it anymore. This is what I mean is when I say they are, it's, we but have that's created what, madness. But I do think that's what, um, that plays into like why the job market is so weird because you no longer just apply for a job and can call the office and say, did you get my resume? Now you're, you, a, a computer is scanning your resume, looking for specific words. And if they're not there, you never make it to the next step. Right. And also maybe that job is being, you know, shown on Monster. And so there are 30,000 people <laughs> applying for this, you know, S. Right, one SQL, job. SQL, yeah. yeah. you know, user interface job or whatever, yeah. right? And and so it's just... It is strange. And I, it, I'm back so to it, localism to up the yazoo, it, localism on steroids. If you're not just caring about yourself and your life, mm. like, we, we can't care about... Oh, can we just reset, reset <laughs> the entire um, world? All right, tell me so about this, this survey. So there was an uh, <laughs> Institute of Politics poll, St. Anselm College, um, that came out today. I just saw it. I only printed it a little bit. Um, this is the summary. Okay. Uh, Democratic Party continues to maintain its lead in the generic ballot. 49% of voters choose a generic Democrat versus 44 that choose a generic Republican. So what was the first number again? 49 to 44. Okay. For generic, just generic. Um, they say this has gone up is from- Is this primary? No, this is now. They're okay. This is since oh. the primary. Um, Chris Pappas is the most popular federal candidate on the ballot. 
Um, he has a 52 to 39 favorable image, putting him at a, ahead of his challenger, um, former executive counsel, Russell Prescott. Well, th that was number. I'm not going to use those numbers because that those are confusing if you don't know what you're reading. Um, so what I did look up is, um, it, I will say this. I do think voters go all over the place. You can see it. You see it all right. the time. So it says uh, one of the things was they asked if you think things in our country are heading in the right or wrong direction. If, are they heading in the right direction or have gotten off track? 60% um, of people said it's on the wrong track. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> but then, you know, tell But me then, if the election for Congress was held today, who would you vote for? 49% say the Democrat, the Democrat. And I think, so you'll just put the people back in office that you th are putting the country in the wrong direction. So, or there are just eleven percent of those respondents who can think. <laughs> right. And, um, what's the most important issue facing America? Uh, Twenty-nine percent say economy and inflation, but yet they're going to put the same people back in office to repeat some more. Um, Fifteen percent said election slash democracy. So you know th these are the words used in the poll. Fifteen percent said border security. Seven percent abortion, and then it goes on from there. Um, if the gubernatorial election were held today, who would you vote for? Forty-six percent said Kelly Ayotte. Forty-three percent said Joyce Craig. So I thought that was so interesting. That one. Uh, so in the newspaper, they actually had I think it was forty-six, forty-one, or maybe it was forty-seven, forty-three. Mm -hmm. And then they said, within the margin of error of 3%, like, but it was beyond the 3%. Right. And I was like, see, now that is the math is very media big. bias, um, right? Like, those words are untrue. Why did you include them? If the congressional election were held today in the first CD, 50% would vote for Pappas, 38% for Russell Prescott, which actually is not that bad for a first-time federal um, candidate, in my opinion. Uh, he has obviously work to do because 8% said they're unsure. So, you know, then you start to put them within 4%, right. you know, so the four points. Um, CD2, same thing. Uh, Maggie Goodlander, who is also a newcomer. So that, that that's going to be an interesting So race. Goodlander's money, have you, I followed the money a little bit, and it stinketh, stinketh, Yeah, stinketh, and that's stinketh. what I'm saying. If, the, if, if Lily can get enough people to help her, like the right people to point out these things, if PACs get behind Lily pointing out Goodlander's money th trail and who she is, I think it'll help Lily. So mostly, just for everyone back home, it's mostly out-of-state money. It's coming from California. Right. There's all kinds of like weird, like what, like who, well, who, Joyce who, Craig, the same thing. Joyce Craig is on a trip with um, Maura Healy from Massachusetts to Los Angeles for a big fundraiser. Okay, please don't bring California politics back to New Hampshire. We don't want that here. So, like, raise your money here. Um, or at least go to D.C. and raise your money. Like, don't go to California. <laughs> um, so, anyways, uh, Goodlander's at 49. Lily is also at 38. So, they both have some work to do, obviously. Um, what is your opinion of Joyce Craig? So, the two highest percentages, well... 37% favorable, 36% unfavorable, 26% no opinion. But the and the somewhat the strongly unfavorable equal, ranks up there with the somewhat favorable. So the people who dislike Clay, Craig really dislike Craig. Um, and then the opinion of Kelly Ayotte, 45% say favorable, 50% say unfavorable. And, you know, so that's something she's going to have to obviously overcome a bit, too. Um, I actually think Kelly will smoke. I think Kelly Craig. will win, too, um, for a variety of reasons. You know, yeah. Um, I think just head-to-head. -head. Issues by candidates. So, like, these were things that I was like, oh, this is interesting. Um, if you like AOT, the number one issue. Law and um, order. <laughs> the number one is the border. Yep. Border security, and then government spending taxes, and then economy inflation, crime. So that's interesting. If you're a supporter of Joyce Craig, environment, climate, um, elections, democracy, abortion. So not issues that actually um, are what people think are most important. You know what I mean? Right. Um, yeah. In the, so that was kind of interesting. Um, gubernatorial election, who would you vote for? Breaking it down. Um, 
Craig picks up the most people, the younger voter. Eh, it's not really true. Um, AYAT definitely has an advantage in the 55 to 64 and older. Um, very conservative, 89% say they'll vote for Joy, uh, for Kelly Ayotte, seventy nine percent of somewhat, or ninety three percent of very liberal would boy, vote for jo Joyce Craig. Um, they split eighty eight, eighty seven to Republican Democrat. So the undeclared is forty four percent saying they'd vote for Ayotte and forty one percent to Craig. So Kelly Ayotte's job, in my opinion, yeah, it's to reach is out to, to independents. get down ballot. Yeah, to 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 shift those votes for her from independents and swing voters to the rest of the ballot. And I think that falls on Kelly Ayotte's shoulders. In Question. My you know, so I was talking to my neighbor because I wanted to put out a, 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 a sign. Mm -hmm. Finally, I was like, oh, I should probably like, start doing something. I am running for office, everyone. Please vote for me on November 5th. But um, I, I stopped to ask her if I could put a sign out on the end of her property. And so we were talking a little bit. and. You know, she said that, yeah, she was just like, who are these people? Who is running? What is going on? You know, um, I, I don't know how we reached the independence. Well, and it's very difficult. We're, we've, I, I've been having a lot of conversations with a lot of different people about this for a variety of reasons, and it is very difficult because, one, okay, so we all get the mail. Well, maybe we all don't get the mail. Uh, I mean, but you get all this full-color mail. I don't think anybody reads any of it. Um, nobody answers their phone anymore. Rarely do people answer their door. Um, you're kind of left with, social media is so fragmented. You got people on Facebook, you got people who aren't on Facebook, you got people on Twitter, and people aren't on Twitter. So, and then are they even seeing it? And, and there's, uh, there's algorithms that are controlling who sees it. It is really unfortunate, I think, because I do think it's causing it to be more difficult for the voter to know, to what's know going what the on. heck is going but, on. So, so what we were talking about is I mentioned to her that, you know, when we talk about down ballot yeah. voting, because she asked about my primary and I was like, well, we have four people running on the slate and there are four seats, yeah. so no one had a primary. And she was like, oh, okay. And then I said, you know, when, when we look at down ballot voting, for example, the, the spread between, let's say in 2016, the first time I ran, mm. Uh, the the delta between what governors the number of people who voted for Governor Sununu dropped yeah. by like forty yeah. to fifty to sixty to seventy yeah. percent as you go yeah. down so, ballot. So when we talk about down ballot voting, it's like, look, if you think on average the Republicans are going to do a better then job fill in than all the, the dots Democrats, for the Republicans. then fill them all out because. It would be better to have a Republican in the right. House if you're voting for a Kelly Ayotte right. than it is going to be to have right. a Democrat if you, if, there. Right. So if and you I want to play the game in a way that actually benefits the state in yeah. a way. But what I was curious about is, I know the Democrats had done a really good job maybe like 10 years ago or more with the get out the vote kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and like there was a lot of marketing, soft marketing, MTV yeah. kind of vibe stuff, right? Get out the vote, get out the vote. So much so that like we have an acronym, GOTV, yeah. and people know what that means, you know, when it's an election time, right? And I was like, why don't we, why don't some PACs or even, you know, the, the NHGOP say, do actual mailings that just focus on persuading people to vote down tickets. I, 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 I don't disagree. So, I, I mean, a good example. Where you I, do a ballot and you that. fill it in yep. and well, you show them. That's what, when I was the chair of the Manchester GOP, that's what I would try to do is, like, emphasize that you just need to vote for the whole team, right? You're like, and if you only can get, you know, a percentage to listen to you, at least that percentage. I mean, I did used to see people carrying those postcards in and it made me happy. Like, right. yay, three yeah. people did it. Um, but I can tell you that years ago, um, giving away, like, this isn't big secret things, but years ago when Phil Grazzo was running for alderman, it was the year he won. And it was making me crazy because I was trying to figure out where are the pockets of votes? Like, where am I going to find you know these other 250 votes that I that he needs to win? Like, it was a number. It was attainable. It just you had to find those voters and you had to think outside the box. And one of the things I did look at was the people who voted in uh, state and federal elections and people who voted in local elections, and they just weren't the same amount of people. And I literally, at, like the weekend before an election, printed up a little postcard and went and put it on you know 200 doors in the ward that basically said if you 
if Republicans would just vote, Republicans would, would win. win. <laughs> and he did finally win. But it was like, you literally just have to vote. If well, you don't I, vote, you're, we're never going to win. Yeah, and I think that's hard because I think certainly people who are more small L libertarian Republicans, we tend to be like, what's the point, right? right. But in local politics, it actually matters. If we want to make sure that we keep New Hampshire awesome, then you know we're going to have to get the right people up at the state right. house to keep it right. awesome. Um, uh, just last thing, not super important or anything, but there was an article in the paper. So the New Hampshire youth movement, which I'm sure if we go and look at money, I can almost bet a beer or my house that it's the same people as the Democrats. And like I'm pretty, pretty sure it's a pack. To me. Right. <laughs> they are suing the state of New Hampshire because the new there is a new voter uh, registration law that goes into effect now that requires new residents seeking to register to vote to present either a birth certificate, a passport, or naturalization papers to prove their citizenship. Can you imagine having to prove you're a citizen? I mean, to be I able had to, to vote, when I went right? the first of time. Of course, it's Democrats. Of course, the citizen. Democrats never want that because if I don't know if they can win if they have all only legal votes. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm becoming part one of those people who's like, I don't know, maybe there's some more to it than I thought. Oh, you know, I did see that the lawsuit against Dominion is going forward and that they are allowed to do, I believe it was 20 hours of deposition, so 40 hours of depositions with leadership. So that might be really interesting, interesting. to see what comes out there. Also, guys, be Aware of exploding beepers. Oh, if that you got a pager, you know, if you had anything to do with what is it, Hamas? Is, I don't uh, remember. Whatever it is, if you got a pager thing. and you're connected to anything in the Middle East, you might want to get rid of it because they explode. And well, I mean, it's not actually funny. No, there, because there people is did now, die. You know, new new form of warfare, yes. which is basically well, there's uh, a lot. You got the drones know. that can shoot the flames. You know, like mm. it's you know it's nasty out there. So let's keep the spirit of humanity yeah. friendly. And lead with love. Yeah. All right, um, guys. So anyways, <laughs> take some time. Go out there and search for, you, unfortunately, you have to search for it usually, um, for who's, um, you can go to the Secretary of State's website. You could probably go to the city clerk's website. I don't know if the sample ballots are out there yet. But look at the names on it. And if, if you don't feel like you can just fill out the dots, if you're a Republican or you're going to vote for Kelly A, you don't feel like you can just vote. Then look those people up ahead of time and say, okay, so who is this person? Oh, I like them. I, oh, look, Andre Rosa, he's involved in the Riven Heights group. Oh, I want to vote for him. Carla Garrick, oh yeah, I want to vote for her. Like, and then do that at least. But if you don't take any time, there is no secret information pool that will appear at the polls. <laughs> Just doesn't show up. All right, guys, we're out of time. Bye. Bye.